Welcome to Tattooed Freaks and Business Suits, recorded live at the Personal Touch Career Services in Denver, Colorado. I am your host, Donna Shannon. As a professional career coach, I help people navigate the hiring maze to get to jobs they really love. So it's true, the world of work in the U.S. is changing, as Gen X millennials and those to come after us seek positions of leadership that still allow them to be themselves. So our show's purpose is to address some of these evolutions and what that means for your own career. And of course, we're going to talk about tattoos. So our sponsor today is the Personal Touch Career Services, Denver's top-rated career coaching service. So check out our signature down and dirty job search program, along with all of our resume packages at our ridiculously long website, which is personaltouchcareerservices.com. Once again, that's personaltouchcareerservices.com, or you know, you can just Google it. Well, with me today, I have a very special guest. Her name is Deb Starkey. Yay! Not related to Mary Louise Starkey. Not related. No, but I not related to Ringo Starr either. But he was apparently as Starkey as well. <laughs> yeah, and not related to the Starkey Hearing Aids Foundation either. Or no, whatever not that either. Do. But you're an amazing human in and of your own right. So Deb, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and what you do? Well, thanks, Donna. I'm a huge fan of yours. So thanks for having me on your podcast. This is really fun to be here. My name is Deb Starkey. As Donna shared, I am a mindset confidence coach. I've been certified and I, I've been coaching for over two decades. Coaching women in business is where um, I love to shine, although I do have a few few smart men that, that have, have joined the ranks as being my clients as well. And I just really love to be able to help people get from where they want to be to where they really will be, you know, where they're really intended to be. So it's, it's kind of a fun process and very creative, very, very different with each client. Great, great. So one of the things that we were just kind of chatting about before we got onto the podcast, so to speak, is accountability is a big factor in things. Right. It's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. And and sometimes we can be accountable to ourselves. But I was telling uh, Donna that there's Forbes did did an article all on at the beginning of the year, because a lot of people start talking about goals and that kind of stuff. But they talked about how sharing your goals and your progress with other people, such as a coach, myself or a mentor, can actually provide a greater success rate of 95%. And it is true that you can't hide when you're accountable to someone. And that's also part of the important piece is having somebody stand for you, having somebody else to be a witness to you and to your success, but also support you if there's things that you aren't quite hitting or things that you're wanting to achieve that that you're not doing and maybe you're struggling with a little bit, maybe try to figure out like why that is. Yeah, I think even the the word is pretty broad, right? So it's huge, yeah. Accountability. What does that actually mean? So part of our processes in working with job seekers is we do a lot mm-hmm. on the accountability front, but it's more than hey, you show up to your meetings on every. We usually meet once a week, sometimes a little bit longer out. It's not just showing up for the meeting. It's also making sure that you've got your tasks accomplished and things along this line. So that's kind of what it looks like for us. So Deb, how about for you? How do you enforce the accountability? Yeah, doing your homework is is a pretty big piece. And I actually encourage my clients to select their own homework. Sometimes they might choose something that might even be a little bit more than what I might select. And I'll, uh, you know, because sometimes, you know, the whole SMART goals that we've heard sometimes you need to cut them in half. Sometimes we're biting off more than we can chew. So let's make it to where you can have some fun with it. And and even there's a, a writer that I really like that talks about goals. He talks about cutting a goal in half. So not making it so big and enormous because that if you take it into bite-sized pieces, you can actually have a better opportunity of, of feeling success and having a win. You know, we really do. We all like to win. You know, we all like to have some kind of win some kind of uh, sense of accomplishment. So that accountability is part of that being, to ha- you know, having some kind of accomplishment. So you don't want to make your your goals or whatever you're trying to achieve so big 
that you're you feel like you're always chipping away at it. So I actually encourage making a lot smaller goals, smaller things, so you can have that that win. You can also have the long term goals too, the long term things that you're you're working towards. But um, it's also having that accountability to ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things that we do is making sure people know what they're tracking. Mm -hmm. That that's my thing. It's the tracking piece of the accountability yep. is i say this all the time if you didn't write it down it didn't happen and if you don't follow up it might as well have never happened so I like that i know i uh take like these very basic business concepts of the things that you track are the things mm -hmm. that you succeed in so it's like every week when i'm meeting with my job seekers it's like how many reach outs did you do? Like actually contacting people mm -hmm. in some regard, whatever. Yeah. You know, how many leads were you getting? How many interviews? How many applications were you putting in? And even how many hours they're doing per week? Because that's my other big thing. It's like if you don't have a plan, mm -hmm. a goal is just a wish. That's right. And then we're we're at Disney and we're thinking about wishing upon a star, right? So you know what, Donna, another thing that you can add to things that you say is attract number grows. So the more you track it, and it's as we talk about mindset, your mind will go and it will help to achieve. So whatever you focus on, you will get more of. So if you're focusing on negative things, if you're focused on, on, oh, this never happens, like your mind will say, okay, let's give her that. So mm -hmm. shall it be. So you also want to pay attention to what you're speaking to yourself in that whole process. You know, if you're thinking that, oh, nobody's ever going to call me back, you know, I'm going to do all these reach outs, but, you know, I'm not going to get anything from, I don't know that I'm really going to get a, get a job anyway. You got to pay attention to that. You're it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in all this. So you've got to also have kind of a positive mindset when you're, you're thinking about what you're wanting to achieve as well. So it's, and also how are you showing up when you're doing those reach outs and are you putting your best foot forward? Or are you really just going through the motion? You know, that's the thing that I would encourage your clients to think about too, is how, are you showing your best self? Are you, or are you just kind of doing it because you got to check it off the list? Mm -hmm. So we do hear that word mindset kicked around a lot lately. Mm -hmm. so how would you define mindset? Oh, gosh. Well, there's a lot of gurus out there that talk about a growth or a fixed mindset. You know, they, they talk about it in, in such a way of it's how you really essentially it's how you think about things. I mean, if we take it down to the bare nubs, even without looking on, on Webster's, but it, it's really the lens that you're looking at your life through. Mm -hmm. You can look at it in, and, and we are all coming, we are all approaching every situation with all of our experiences and the things that we've accomplished over the years. And, you know, when I say experiences, they could be good, bad, or indifferent, you know, even Donna, you've had a number of things. I mean, I love that you've been on the comedy stage. I mean, that's a, that's a whole experience in itself, but you're bringing that also to the table when you're working with your clients because you've had experience in that way just as you you know somebody may come to the table and they've had a negative experience we're all coming with those things but how are you interpreting those things we mm -hmm. can't control what happens to us the only thing we really can control is how we respond to it how we think about it how we look at it so there's a way to look at things in a positive or negative light and sometimes there's not a way to put a spin on something that truly was um, terrible, but maybe there's a blessing or maybe there's something we can learn from that. So your mindset really is, how are you looking at something? How are you approaching it? Yeah. It's kind of also like on acceptance too. Acceptance mm. doesn't mean we have to like it. True. So yeah. true. But you can't really so change true. something unless you accept what's going on. Well, and that leads us to awareness, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. One of the very first things I talk about with my clients is you've got to be aware of it. You know, it's kind of like flipping on the light. I give an analogy where if you if you go into a hotel room you've never been in before 
and you're tired, exhausted, you throw it on your bag and, and you, you just fall into bed. But in the middle of the night, you need to use the facilities and you get up. If you don't turn on the light, you need to navigate to get to the bathroom. Like what's the likelihood that you're not going to stub your toe or run into something because you don't know where things are. You got to flip that light on and see what's the path. What could I do? What do I have to avoid? What we all need to do that in everything we do. Mm -hmm. So it's just a time to, to have that awareness. And I talk about, let's flip on the light. Let's check it out. What's what's in front of us. Let's get the lay of the land before we're, we're diving in to look at what's next. And you, your clients have to do that too. when they're looking at, you know, what kind of job do they want? What, you know, what does the landscape look like, you know, and do I want to go that direction or not? You know, so that awareness is, is really key, but I like the idea of of acceptance too. You have to, you have to know what's, what's out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And certainly as coaches, we're supposed to help point out the blind spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We all have them. The blind spot. I and mean, that's one of the biggest things. And I, I think that's one of the best things that we can, we can support others in as we, we help coach them along. And a lot of times it's asking a lot of questions, mm. you know, people will have a bigger aha if they can have the, um, if it can be unveiled on their own, they're more 80% more likely to to get it if they come up with what's happening as opposed to if we tell them what's happening mm. so that's also an interesting piece too um but and and so that's what comes up with you know as we're talking about accountability is that if somebody's meeting with me and we've gotten together two or three times and the same goal or the same homework has been given but they're not doing it why what's the reason yeah what's getting in the way and, and that sometimes is really important and they can have some really big ahas of Maybe fears coming up, maybe insecurity in something, or maybe they just need more knowledge or understanding about something before they they take something on. Or maybe the goal is isn't really what they want. That's the other piece. You know, do you do you have the goal like sitting in the right way, or is it really something that you you want to achieve? Yeah, and I think too this gets into like as we were just talking about how. I'm supposed to be doing all these promotional things for my podcast. So oh, I need to be cutting up the little tiny videos and reposting it everywhere. And I'm just like, I just have no desire to do it. And yeah. do, I, do I know how to do it? Do I have the tools to do it? Yes. Do I have the time to do it? Absolutely not. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I haven't even posted some of the good comedy sets I've had lately. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I, I just, don't have the time to do it. Yeah. Well, and and with that, time in one area is time away from another, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the other thing is making the choices of where is your time best suited to, to be used. One of the hacks that I give with, and I have a, 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 a how to get shift done, because in my world, I can't actually say this. What did S-word. you say? What did I you know. Say? How do you get shift done? You better spell that one. You said it again. (laughs) But one of the hacks is instead of like looking at that, it has to take, you know, it's going to take me five hours to do this or something, but bite it off into 15 minute little segments. Uh, It's sometimes it's easier to find 15 minutes to do something than it is to, to take it. Cause sometimes it's, it's bigger than what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So even with your, well, and actually, you're probably at a place where it's easier to just hire somebody to do it. And then you've got, it'll take them a lot less time than you anyway, right? Yeah. But but in, in doing that, you know, break apart all, all the different pieces that need to happen with that. And instead of looking at that, you have to take it and chunk out your whole day to do it, you know, maybe 15 minutes a day. Like, you know, you, you give up 15 minutes of your hour long lunch break and you do just one little piece. But don't t- don't tell yourself you have to do the whole thing in that moment because that's where we get hung up. We get oftentimes people get hung up because it they think the job or think the task is going to be so long or so so arduous. I have a friend that she t- took on this and she's a quilter and I was looking I'm like oh my gosh how do you have time to make these gorgeous quilts and she's 
she's given them to, you know, babies and people that have served in the military. I mean, she's like very philanthropic and doing a very, you know, heart from the heart kind of thing. But I'm like, how in the world do you have time to do this? She goes, oh, just 15 minutes a day. I'm like, you're kidding me. She has a luxury of, she has it set up in her craft room so she can just leave it. But she looks forward to that 15 minutes. And there's sometimes that she does 20 minutes. But for the most part, it really is just 15 minutes a day. And she just does one little piece for 15 minutes, done and moves on. And over the course of time, those small, that's that compound effect. Darren Hardy talks about that, that small, seemingly insignificant things done repeatedly over a period of time, you get amazing things done. So that's the other piece is, is with accountability. It's like, okay, let's look at how can we really get it accomplished? If it's really something you want to do, you have to make that determination first. If, you know, maybe it's a, a you know, because that's also how to get stuff done is delegating. <laughs> that's yes. a great, you know, that's another good, good way of getting some things accomplished. And then they could, you're then whoever you hire can be accountable to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, I believe it's Gay Hendricks wrote the book about the big leap. And he's yeah. the guy who's very famous about, oh, working within your zone of genius. Genius. And- you got all the different levels there, starting off with the zone of incompetence, zone of competence. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just below the zone of genius is the one that you're really, really good at, but not necessarily passionate about anymore. And mm-hmm. it's like I've been trying to do some automation tools in my business. It's just been excruciating because I yeah. am so clearly in my zone of incompetence. <laughs> And it's so bad, I can't train anybody else on how to do it. Nobody on my team knows how to do it. And I... Because you need to know how to do it before you can, like, delegate to somebody else. You can at least train somebody else with what you want to do. Exactly. And Mm -hmm. it's... Oh, it sucks. (laughs) Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes that is. And sometimes that's... Something's in your blind spot that needs to be just tweaked just a little bit. Mm-hmm. To and all of a sudden something opens up. I mean, in, in in a similar area, like you need to know just enough how to do something. So if you're having somebody else do it, you know if it's not being done the way that you really want it to be done. Mm-hmm. But somebody else will be much more efficient in doing it. So there's there's that leverage point of like of when to hire somebody, when to have somebody else come in and and take care of those um, those things too. You know, so it's another piece. It's important, you know. Yeah. So one thing that you talk about too is like gamification. So ah, I love gamification. Okay, tell me <laughs> about that. Let's gamify. Well, you know, I you have to know yourself. That's the other piece. Know how you like to respond to things, how how you do things. You know, some people I'm I'm definitely, you know, a check off the list kind of gal. I like to make a a, a game out of something. So and and finding ways to win. So you also have to need to know what are you motivated for? What's your motivation? Are you motivated towards pleasure or like winning or getting a gift or like a prize or something like that? Or are you more motivated by not having something bad happen? You know, so you have to kind of know which way to make your what you're going to achieve or what the what the win is going to be, so to speak, because sometimes not having something bad happen will motivate and inspire someone to do something more than giving them a shiny object. So kind of need to know that. Or a carrot. Do they need a yes or a carrot? Exactly. Exactly. So then you you can come up with with different things to make something fun if that's something that that inspires you or you get excited about. But I do. I love checking off a thing. So sometimes, I don't know if any of your listeners have done this before, but you get something accomplished and you have to go write it on your list because it wasn't there just so you can check it off. So (laughs) I do that all the time too. But so find out like what you're, what you're, what you're working for. Like, what do you want to do? But then what is the game? What is the, what is the game? Like for me, like, I'm like doing well on my water. So then I've come up with ways of how do I get my water done? So w- what are the ways that I can make sure that I'm my monitoring or I'm tracking getting it done? Well, now what I've come up with is I have two different water bottles, one that's 24 ounces, one that's 32. And if I drink both of them, 
well, then I've drank a lot of water, but if I, if I, I can even do the better and try to drink two of each of them and then, wow, then I've really done. So it sometimes it's just a simple little thing, mm -hmm. but it inspires you. I also have a checklist that I've created that I have all these things that I'm trying to accomplish in a day. And then I have a checkoff and, and then I realize how often I've done those right now I'm gamifying sleep because I figured out that I wasn't sleeping very well. So then I'm starting to figure out like, what are the hacks? What are the, the habits that I've created that aren't allowing me to sleep at night? Oftentimes it's your devices, your cell phone that's causing the problem, but you kind of have to, you kind of have to hack it and figure out like, and try to have that awareness of yourself of what's, what's happening or not happening. And sometimes it's plugging in the phone across the, across your room or maybe even a different room altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but then I actually like the the tracking on my phone. This I, I love looking and seeing how long did I actually sleep because it will it will say whether I got deep sleep or or where it was unrestful. And some nights it's only five hours and then I, I'm dragging you know most of the day. But like last night I got over 10 hours of sleep. Like even with the whole spring forward thing, you know, I was really proud of myself. <laughs> and so it, it makes me happy to have those kind of things, but you have to kind of know yourself first mm -hmm. and, and figure out what, what, what are the ways that you can kind of um, make it fun for yourself? Like some people are trying to do exercise things. Well, how, what's the best way for you to, to keep track? I know some, some, exercise places they have like stick they're putting stickers up and you feel like these kids these, these adults are like in second grade because they're excited about their sticker but if that excites you and you you see all the stickers up there for yourself then go for it you know what is it going to get to motivate you or inspire you to get something else done or to to hold that personal accountability or do you need to have someone else be accountable some people have walking buddies because they know they'll show up if they've got a walking buddy or they they're going to have a workout partner because they they can't let that person down they could let themselves down but they can let them the other person down so have to kind of figure out sometimes it's going you know you've got to go to the gym to to do the workout because you can't do it at home because you'll just pull the covers over your head you know and and do that so and sometimes for me also it's like figuring out like i i will get bored if i have to work out the same way all the time so what are the things, but I have to kind of plan ahead and, okay, am I going to do Pilates today? Am I going to go for a walk? Am I going to lift weights or, and then I can, can play a game with myself like, okay, well, when you get that done, not if, when you get that done, you get to do X, Y, Z. And it doesn't have to be a monetary thing. It could be, you know, give yourself a bubble bath or, you know, make yourself a smoothie or a, you know. I guess if you have ice cream, then you're kind of defeating the purpose of the working out. But anyway, some of us like to work out so we can eat more food. Okay. Hey, I think that's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing for sure. Yeah. So one of the things that we give our clients as part of their job search is that nobody really knows what their key performance indicators or their KPIs are. Mm hmm because when it comes to job searching, it's like, how do you know if you've been successful? You get a job, right? Job, yeah, yeah. So we actually provide them like some metrics, like, yeah, how many interviews should you be landing for every ten applications that you're submitting? Mm -hmm. The the number's two to three, by the way. Right, two to three. Yeah. So two to three interviews for every ten applications. Every ten applications. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, good that's to know. Like good. First round interviews, that's like screening mm -hmm. interviews, not multiple interviews at the same company. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's statistics, right? Mm -hmm. But it's trying to find something to measure. Um, so you can find that achievement at the at the end of what it is. I think that's important to to know what your I mean, everybody's gonna have different KPIs or you know, key performance indicators. I mean, they're really just tasks that you're you're tracking, right? Um, but if it's not for a, for a job search, if it's for something else, you're going to have to, I mean, that's beautiful that you're able to give that to people for the job search. So they know what they're tracking. Mm -hmm. if you're not in that situation. Then you've got to, 
it's kind of nice to be able to have somebody give you guidance or support and helping you figure out what is that. Because the, again, here we are again, that track number grows. So the more that you're paying attention to it, the more likely that you're going to be aware, that's that awareness key too, that you'll be aware of what's happening. And then if you don't see anything changing, then maybe something needs to be tweaked along the line because maybe there's something that you you aren't paying attention to that maybe you, you might want to be. And you notice that I didn't say should. And I, and I was really happy that when you were talking about what you were doing, you didn't say should either, because we got to be careful to not should on ourselves, because then that's just a real shaming kind of technique. And it doesn't give us the opportunity of growth or possibility. So instead, we could look at what could we be doing? Mm-hmm. What could we be doing? What's the other other choice in the matter? And maybe another KPI for, for your um, your clients to consider is you know, their approach or their mindset, like, how are they looking at, are they, are they, you know, are they thinking each day? I can't wait for, you know, who I'm going to reach out to. I can't wait for who's going to get to meet me. Cause you're looking, they're looking for a match. We're all looking for a match, right? Mm -hmm. So some of those people that they're not hearing back from some of those places, it's probably a blessing. Cause if it's, if they didn't feel like they were extraordinary and, you know, meant for that, for that particular job, then it might might have been something that might not have been beneficial for either one of them. And that can be a blessing too. So that's also something to consider is maybe it's, you know, in your best interest that you didn't get whatever that job was. And the next thing is going to be the one that's going to be the best, the right. best fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anyways, anything else that you want to share with us about accountability or for mindset? Oh, gosh, let's see. You know, I guess also be gentle with yourself. Give yourself grace. Another tool that I love to use, too, is to each day, I really try to do this. I got this from from a mentor and is try to create three wins. What were the three wins from today? You write those down. And then what are your three anticipated wins for the next day? So this is a way to be accountable to yourself. Mm -hmm. So for today, one of my anticipated wins was having a blast with you, Donna, on our on on the recording Uh, of the podcast. I was like, I gotta cut that one. (laughs) (laughs) But really, like if you if you can just start with things that are small that you don't, you know pull off and, or bite off more than you can chew those three wins. Everybody can look at identifying three, you know, po- through positive things that happened to you today and then write down three because your mind will go to work to fix those. Your mind will go to, cause you already set it up for itself to think about those things. So you'll be set off on the, on the right foot of what you're, what you're looking to do the next day. So yeah, there you go. Cool. So now we get to talk about my favorite part of the show. Yay! Tattoos. But Deb, you don't have any tattoos. I don't have any permanent ones. Oh. Mm. But I do have some temporary ones. Oh, did you put those on just for me? <laughs> I did. I Let's have two. I have two. I, and I get to be a little risque when I show you one of them. Woohoo! Isn't it pretty? It's pretty. Not, this is the auditory platform you need to tell people what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, anyway, on my shoulder, like, you know, Donna just got to see a little bit of my shoulder has a little um, um, rainbow-ish butterfly with some sculpy things. And then on my it's arm, I tattoo, have... But it is. It's, huh? tri- what? it's tribal tattoo. Tribal oh, stuff. it is a tribal tattoo. Ooh, see, I'm learning. It's a tribal tattoo I have on my shoulder. And then this one is... I don't really know. It's purple and black. I just thought it looked cool. It's has some stars on it and almost looks like a little spider but is that does that have a name is that that's not a tribal is it no that's not a tribal and it's not the sun it's not the sun from godsmack which was kind of like a big thing in the 90s a lot of people got the godsmack logo the band on the band yeah yeah like right on their belly buttons it was kind of weird but oh that's kind of an interesting spot well my daughters my both my daughters have tattoos and i've thought about getting one with them but we don't neither one of us or none of the three of us have decided what that is Mm. because i wanted to have meaning and Mm. 
um, needs to have some kind of connection. And they they both have some really beautiful tattoos. Uh, I admire tattoos, um, but I just haven't found one that, that I want to have for me yet. So you have several, don't you, Donna? Yes, I do. I am actually pretty heavily tattooed. I have like nine pieces and they're all big. I don't do anything small. What was your first one? It actually no longer exists. It's been covered up since then. Oh, okay. And, and why is that? Was uh, it number one? It was bad art. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody was practicing. <laughs> no, it was no, it was bad art on my part. Oh, so, yeah. It was you a, didn't. It was just a dumb idea. Well, it wasn't oh, okay. entirely dumb, but nobody knew what the hell it was. So. It was based on a tarot card, The Tower, but it was oh. a deck that was all cat-themed, so the tower itself looked like a cat. Um, but the whole point of The Tower is spiritual growth through total destruction. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, there's a reason why I've been sober for 24 years, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> now, we all find the things that serve us, right? Right. But when I was one year sober, I got that covered up with a phoenix. Same oh, lesson. Rising. But it's on the other side of On the different message. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and that goes back to what we were talking about. We all come to the situation with all the different experiences mm -hmm. that we've had, right? Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent. No judgment. It's just all of like, we all are bringing things that that help, you know, can inspire or help the situation based on the lens that we're looking through. Right. Right. Yeah. So oh. I hear you're, I hear you're um, letting people choose your next tattoo. That's right. The voting goes through March 31st. So hopefully we'll get this posted before, <laughs> <laughs> before that. Oh, and if not, okay. then you missed it. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So are are there some front runners? Do you know? Yeah. There is. There is. So Pikachu is definitely the front runner. Oh, Pikachu. Okay. You know who Pikachu is? I it's it yes, I do. It's a little the little yellow guy, right? Yep. Yep. He's an electric. But he's mount. yes. But is he is he doing a particular thing or is it just him? I have some ideas in mind. Possibly interacting with Bulbasaur, who's another Pikachu Pokemon. I won't expect you to know all of the Pokemon. There's a lot. Um, also, possibly the ones people can vote on is Luke Skywalker or Darth oh. Maul. Uh, I did have my own company logo in there. Business expense, right? I and yeah, I kind of like that idea. It's a cool. You can always. You could you well is it the dragon one because you had the dragon one on there I wondered if you had that because that, that's part of your logo. It's not you a dragon. That dragon. It's another phoenix. Oh, that's the phoenix. Is that the one that you changed? Is it? So you ha already have that one on? No, no, no. The phoenix that I have is very different than our logo. There's several decades in between those events. <laughs> It can grow. Your phoenix can grow. Yeah. It's rising from the ashes, right? It's already half my calf, Deb. How big are it? <laughs> <laughs> the whole calf. You can no. have a sleeve on your arm. You can have a sleeve on your calf. Why not? Yeah. They do <laughs> have all leg tattoos. Most of it. Oh, I have a very bad tiger that needs to be covered up. So far, that one has like a couple votes on it. I hope that one does not win because it's going to be extremely expensive. Does well, it, maybe that one needs to be the company one? Yeah, it's half my thigh. That would be <laughs> also mostly the tiger is black, and it's really hard to cover anything with black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be expensive and large, and I don't know what I want to put over it. And then, of course, we have the right end votes too. So. Oh, nothing obscene, too. anybody, please. Nothing what? Obscene. Oh, obscene. Yeah. Keep it clean. Yeah. Keep it yeah. clean. If I have to cover it up to, like, go to a pool in Disneyland, it is not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen some interesting tattoos on people. <laughs> <laughs> I was, we were in a pool and, and this gal had, she had a face 
on her thigh. Mm. And I don't know that it was with the guy that the face, I don't think matched the person she was with. So I wondered how that really happened. So, yeah, I don't, I won't, even with the, like the Luke Skywalker and the Darth Maul ideas, I'm probably going to go with cartoon versions of them as opposed to photo mm. stick because it's very difficult to find artists who can do photorealistic faces in particular. Oh, and yeah. Then, and tattoos over time fade and blend and bleed a little bit. So mm -hmm. you could have a wonderful tattoo, but in 10 years, it's going to look pretty bad. Mm. It can look a lot different. Yeah. yeah. Then especially as we grow and evolve, right? Or I age. like the way you put that grow and evolve. <laughs> Get old and your skin stretches out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's your difference between a positive mindset. <laughs> and a negative one. There you go. True. So, so true, that's true. your light and love coach. And I'm your grumpy Gen X coach. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that I can't be uh, a hard ass or a badass too, but I do it sometimes in a gentle way. So there you go. Yeah. All righty, Deb. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been really fun. Where can people find you? Assuming Thank you, Donna. Yes. Well, DebStarkeyCoaching.com, if you can spell D-E-B-S-T-A-R-K-E-Y, coaching. Dot com that's where you can find me probably the easiest um on the website but i'm also on linkedin thanks to donna i have at least a little bit of a presence on linkedin still trying to get into doing better on there and then of course i'm on facebook and just deb starkey on both i guess on in instagram it's deb.starkey but yeah just my name on all those so or you, yeah, can, thanks, google it. <laughs> or you can google it yeah and actually, Google reviews, that's that's really, I've gotten some really lovely Google reviews. And I even had clients find me on, from Google. So that's kind of fun, too. And I've got some group programs that are coming up. But you can find that when you look on my website. One is actually is an accountability circle I'm doing. So I know it's it's going to be really fun. Really fun to have a bunch of women together. And, and that's actually a really cool thing, too, is to have, you know, kind of that peer support and accountability of having a friend or having a group of women because we can call each other out in a gentle way, but yet stand for itself and, and be kind of a, an inspiration for each other too. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much, Doug, for joining me today. My name is Bob. Oh, thanks, Donna. This is fun. And my company is Personal Touch Career Services, and we will catch you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to Tattooed Freaks in Business Suits, produced by the Personal Touch Career Services. Our host is Donna Shannon. All music has been ethically sourced and licensed from SoundDogs.com and EpidemicSound.com. Support the arts. We certainly do. Join us next time as we continue to explore the evolving world of work and leadership in the United States. If you are interested in being a guest or if you would like to receive a complimentary career evaluation, please visit the contact page at personaltouchcareerservices.com. Once again, that's personaltouchcareerservices.com. Or you can just Google it.